Alrighty. Alrighty, so officially starting. My name is Carrie McGinn. Welcome to Don't Let Pain Hold You Back. Once again, I ask that you stay muted until the end when we're asking questions, just so we everyone can hear all the information that is going on. Um, when we get to the end, I will be accepting questions. If you have any questions um, while we go throughout our chat, please pop them in the chat box, but otherwise do your best to stay muted until we get to the end. Alrighty, let me share my screen. So oh, good. Welcome everyone. Like I said, this is Don't Let Pain Hold You Back. My name is Carrie McGinn. I'm a physical therapist, yoga instructor, and coach in the Boston area. So a little bit about what to expect from today. We're going to dive into what is back pain, some common ailments and complaints, some common postures, different ways to decrease back pain, the role of ergonomics, and how to use posture to improve your back pain. If you are just jumping into the call right now, if you don't mind muting, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So as I said, I am a yoga instructor and a physical therapist. So through yoga, you'll see some yoga poses in here that you learn ways to breathe, stretch, some relaxation techniques that really can help relieve common discomforts and aid in mental and physical performance. As a physical therapist, I've treated many, many posture-related pains and discomforts. And I believe it's important to look at the whole body in order to optimize your work environment. So we'll look today at things you can do and things you can adjust, um, whether it be stretching or movement, as well as setup of desk to address some common concerns. So this is just a disclaimer. This presentation is not meant to diagnose or treat back pain. These are generalized recommendations to guide you. If you are in pain, please find a qualified healthcare practitioner, such as your general practitioner or physical therapist to help you discuss this. I will be asking, uh, sorry, answering questions at the end, um, but I can't specifically diagnose or treat um, a certain ailment uh, via, the, via this group setting. Alrighty, so what is back pain? So a lot of times we talk about back pain, most people are thinking about the lower back because that's where we commonly get low back pain. But your back really expands from below your neck to above your butt. And that's really the whole spine. So your back is really your spine, which is holding you up um, and it's made up of a lot of little vertebrae. So today we will talk a little bit about low back pain and upper back pain, just so we get a comprehensive look um, of what's going on in your body. So first I wanna talk about a couple of painful back postures that I commonly see that can cause some discomfort in people. So first is that rounded forward look. This compresses the front of the body and places tension on the muscles of the back. You can also see people leaning completely to one side. That can put a lot of pressure on one side of the body and create discomfort there, and then really overstretch the other side of the body. Then we also see people seated really far forward, so they're kind of slumping with all their weight on their tailbone. And that puts a lot of pressure on the low back, the tailbone, and the sacrum. Beautiful. I'm just gonna ask one more time if you are, um, if you could just mute yourself so that there's no background noise, that would be really greatly appreciated for the quality of uh, the sound. Thank you so much. So some common upper back complaints. Sometimes something feels stuck. So that feeling of something in your upper back that maybe limits your motion, you can't reach behind you, um, you can't twist as well. There's also a really common complaint of like, wow, my, it just feels tired, it's fatigued all the time, whether that's your upper back or low back. And it's this overall sensation of like, I can't like sit up anymore, I need to lay down, I need to support myself. There's also commonly seen feeling tension um, going up into the neck from the mid back or even from the low back. And that can radiate up or down um, and really cause some discomfort there. So these are just common complaints I like to point out in case you're feeling any of them. Um, to know that nothing crazy is going on, but that's just your body trying to probably send you some signals. 
and we'll talk a little bit about how to address all these different things today. So what do you do for low back pain? We're going to dive right into the nitty gritty of this so that you guys have some real tangible tools to take with you into your day-to-day -day life. At the end, we'll go through ergonomics. So my number one tip for any back related discomfort is to move your body. Our bodies love movement. We are built to move as humans, especially our backs. My number one recommendation I can give people is to incorporate daily movements into their lives. A little bit goes a long way here. So I'm not saying you need to start training for a marathon or you need to start a crazy strength training routine. I'm talking add in just a little bit of movement in your day to day life. If you feel like you're moving a lot in your day to day life and you're still having back pain, we'll talk about that a little bit in a second. But my first tip really is gentle movement for your body. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So how do you add more movement into your day-to-day -day life? I'm sure if you're like me and people I work with, your life is pretty busy at this moment. There's a lot going on, work, family, stressors, all these different things. So here are my top tips for incorporating movement into your day. Number one is schedule it in. Book it in your calendar like you would an important business meeting. It's an appointment with yourself, even if it's a five minute appointment, it doesn't have to be a lot. I also like to set reminders such as setting alarms or using post-its around my house um, to remind me to move, especially when I have a long day at the computer. So right now I alternate between long days at the computer and treating people in person. When I have long days in the computer, it can be really hard, easy I should say, to get lost in emails and writing and in Zoom meetings, all that good stuff. So if I don't put reminders out for myself, it's hard to remember like, oh wow, I've been sitting at the computer for three plus hours, five plus hours, keep on going. My other tip would then pick a movement that you like. So don't force yourself to do something that you hate. If you don't like to run, don't run. If you don't like to stretch, we'll talk about that. We'll make stretching feel good, but really choosing something to add into your day that will feel good in your body mentally and physically, not just because I told you. So I'm going to give you lots of tips and tricks throughout this presentation. If you don't like one of my tips and tricks, that's okay. Try something else. There's no one right way to move. There's just what works for you and your body. So some of my really simple movement tips that you can do in five minutes is walk, dance, stretch, or if you have stairs in your home, going up and down a couple flights of stairs. This is where I really want to talk about a little bit going a long way. So you don't need to go for a 20 minute walk. I love even when people just go for a five minute walk. So even if that's just like, okay, I have some time between my, this meeting and my next meeting, let me get up, just walk around the block. Let me walk around all the rooms in my apartment. Or if you have a house walking around the house, that will do more for your body than we as humans in this modern society give it credit for. Dancing is another really fun one, especially if you have family members at home or especially if you're home alone and you can blast some music and just have yourself a little bit dance party. I love dancing for two reasons. It gets us out of our head. Um, usually you can put on your favorite song and it gets you into your body a little bit more. And then you can move however you want. You don't have to do a certain dance. You don't have to follow a routine. You can kind of just shake to the beat and move around. We'll go over a lot more stretching today as well. I'll give you some specific stretches on how to move, add that into your day. And then stairs is just like walking. If, say you work on the second floor of your home or you live on the third floor of your apartment building, just like taking a walk down the stairs and back up can really help get the blood flowing and have a lot more helpful physical and mental benefits than we give it credit for. So my number one tip, like I said, is adding more movement into your day, especially if you're seated for long periods of time working. Number two is stretch more. So I know I said previously, if you don't like to stretch, don't stretch. But this is where I'm gonna kind of go back on that and say, stretching can be really helpful for discomfort, especially when related to sitting for long periods of time. Back to my previous point, our bodies are made for movement. Our modern life doesn't always support that movement. And that doesn't mean that, you know, quit everything and stop working on the computer. That just means we need to make a little bit of an extra effort to get moving, to move our body, to stretch out. Due to the modern constraints on a day-to-day -day basis, we just don't take our body through our full range of motion. Think about it. When was the last time you sat on the floor? When was the last time you reached completely overhead? Unless you have really high cabinets like I do at home, you're not always reaching completely overhead to pick something up on the day-to-day -day basis. 
Stretching can help improve your range of motion. It can, you can help learn about your body and address aches and discomforts before they come become pain. And stretching doesn't need to be painful. In fact, I don't want it to be painful. If you try out any of the stretches I recommend and they are painful, I would recommend easing up. At no point while you're stretching should you be holding your breath, grimacing, or panting. That's a good sign that you're stretching a little bit too hard and pushing your body a little bit too far past its limit. So stretching can also help address some of those common areas of discomforts that come up with our modern kind of day-to-day -day life on computers. So tight hips, tight shoulders, tight neck, tight low back. Stretching can really help start moving those areas so we can bring blood flow, we can use our full range of motion, and we really can get to know our bodies. So let's go into some stretches. If you're at home and you have the space and you want to try this, feel free to. So these are my top three seated stretches. These are stretches that you don't even need to get out of your chair for. Just, and I'll talk you through them, but you can see the pictures as well. The first one is sitting up nice and tall with your feet flat on the floor. And then you're just going to take one hand to reach behind you and the other hand to reach across. So just twisting in one direction, taking a couple of breaths, and then twisting in the other. Like I said, if you have the space at home, give it a try. It doesn't matter where you go. And you also don't want to be forcing. So you don't want to be forcing yourself into a deep twist. It's just a really gentle movement. I also like to add a little bit of breath here to get a little extra out of it. So while you're facing forward, you can inhale and then exhale, twist to the left. Inhale back through center, exhale, twist to the right. You can kind of go back and forth with that breath pattern at your own pace a couple of times. So that is a seated twist. The next one you see here is a seated side bend. So this is where you take, say, your left hand to the edge of your chair, anchor yourself in, feet are flat on the floor, and then you reach your right arm up and over like you're tipping over like a teapot. I like to take a full breath in and out. And then inhale to come back through center and exhale over to the other side. Right hand grabs your chair, left arm reaches up and over. A full breath in and a full breath out. And then the third stretch you see here is a seated forward fold. So with your feet on the ground, you're gonna push your chair out a little bit. Palms and forearms can come to your desk. And then you can just slowly begin to bring your chest towards your thighs and let your head hang heavy. So there, you're getting a nice lengthening of the spine, of the muscles of under the arms, the low back, all of that good stuff. So at its simplest, these three stretches you can do without even getting out of your chair and can go a really long way to getting you moving. Alrighty, next up, these are some stretches that are a little bit more um, intensive, for lack of a better word. You might need to get on the floor, or you might need to stand up from your uh, chair. And I'm just showing you a couple of my fan favorites here. I am not discriminating against other stretches or saying that anything else is not good. These are just kind of my favorite ones to do personally and professionally after a long day at the computer when you're dealing with some discomfort. So the one in the top left hand corner, figure four stretch, gets into the muscles of the outer hips and glutes. You cross one ankle over the opposite thigh, and then you can hug that thigh into your chest. If that feels really hard, you can keep that foot on the ground. So you see this woman has her left leg lifted. She can just put that left foot on the ground to make it a little bit more attainable. We'll then bop over to the eagle arms. This is a great one talking about the upper back. So you can, Let's actually have everyone try this here if you have the space. I'll talk you through it. You're going to have your arms come wide in a T, and then you're going to stack your left elbow on top of your right. Bending the elbows, you might take your hands to your shoulders, or might, you might take a second wrap and take your hands to touch each other. And then from there, you just lift your elbows to shoulder height and press your hands away and breathe into the back side of your body, filling up and letting go. And you can hold as much as you'd like, but at least for a couple of breaths. On your next exhale, unwind. Let's just switch sides so we feel really good. You're going to stack your right arm on top of your left elbow, bend your elbows, and then you might wrap the hands around a second time, taking your palms to face each other. Or as you see this woman, her palms aren't perfectly facing each other, but her fingertips of one hand touch the palm of the other. 
And then you breathe in here, filling up and letting go. Another inhale, and then you can exhale, relax. So that's one you can do in seated as well or in standing. The two bottom ones are what are commonly known as a little sequence of cat cows. You might commonly see this in a yoga class. So these are really taking your spine and your entire back through your full range of motion. So I like to think inhale, you let your belly drop towards the floor, lift your heart, lift the tailbone like a cow. And on your exhale, you press the ground away, round your back, tuck your chin like a cat. Those are ones that I commonly do on the floor so that you can really um, get yourself moving, but you can also try it in seated just with your hands on your knees, sitting up nice and tall, arching and rounding the back. I'll be completely honest and say that's one of my fan favorites for low back and upper back discomfort. The last stretch on this slide is a quad stretch. I find that a lot of us are sitting um, for long periods of time and the fronts of our thighs get really tight so it's just a nice kind of added stretch to add into all the different um, stretches I showed. So these are just some gentle variations. If anyone has any questions on these at the end, I'm happy to review them again. So another thing that you can do is if you're moving, if you're stretching and you're still a little uncomfortable, it can be really helpful to strengthen the core and hips. This can help support the low back. This is not necessarily my first line of defense for posture-related discomfort, but it's really used for overall. Strength training can really help improve pain and discomfort, and it's a useful piece to add into anyone's wellness routine. And there's no right way to strength train, but I do think getting stronger and making our bodies more resilient is really helpful to fight off aches, pains, and discomfort. I will say before diving into some of these strength ideas that if you're not sure where to start, I would start with a trusted professional like a personal trainer, a physical therapist, or even just asking a family member that is well versed in um, working out. You don't need to know everything. I'm going to give you some ideas, but if you are dealing with pain and discomfort right now, I would definitely get a little bit of guidance just so you know where you're going. So as a physical therapist and a personal trainer, these are some of my top moves, strength moves, when someone's coming out of low back pain discomfort or just trying to prevent overall discomfort. So the first one you see here, upper left-hand corner are some planks. I'm sure you guys have heard of them before at some point or the other. This is a really great total body activation. When you're doing a plank, you don't wanna feel in your low back. You might feel in your shoulders, your core, maybe even the fronts of your legs. But if you're feeling it in your low back, I would definitely try something else or ask for help. When you're doing the plank, you want to make sure that your whole body is active. And once again, you are breathing. Bridges next to the planks are also a really great way to strengthen the core and the glute muscles, the bum muscles around the hips. Same thing here. You do not want to feel this in your lower or upper back. You really want to feel it maybe in your core, your legs, or your hamstrings. So just things to be aware of when you're performing this exercise. On the bottom left hand is deadlifts. This is definitely a little bit more of a quote unquote tricky move, but it's really great for total body strength, low back discomfort, and leg strength. So once again, I'm going to say this about everyone that I'm showing you. If you're feeling discomfort while doing the exercise, I would definitely have someone else help you out with it, but they can be really great for, to help prevent low back pain. Excuse me. Side planks are another great way to strengthen the core and the outer hips and the shoulders. And then squats are a great total body movement to get the blood flowing, um, the legs strong, the core strong, and really just great overall. A fun way to add in some of the strengths was say you don't have time right now for a full strength routine, but you know you want to get moving, you want to add in a little bit of these pieces. So one fun thing I've seen clients do is when they set those reminders from themselves to get moving, they make a little list. So I have one client that does five and five. They pick five exercises and do each five times. So let's say five and three for now. You stand up from your computer, do five squats, five bridges, and hold a plank for five seconds. It might not seem like much, but it gets your body moving. It gets you out of that seated position and starts to activate some muscles so that your blood is flowing and that you're supporting all the muscles in your body. So that's just a fun little way to kind of get movement interspersed throughout your day. And like I said, there are a ton of different strength ideas. These are just a place to start. 
So I want to dive in in the last um, in portion of this um, lecture is about ergonomics and the role that plays in back pain and discomfort while working. So ergonomics is the study of people's efficiency in their working environment. And nowadays it's really related to their desk setup. So a lot of people are working from home still during, due to our current climate. And there can be a lot of pain, discomfort. It can be hard to work. So improving your work from home setup can decrease discomfort in the neck, low back, and upper back, in the shoulders, knees, and hips. It can even improve concentration and work performance and prevent injury and pain. So we're really going to focus on the next couple of slides on how to decrease discomfort in these areas and prevent injury and pain. Um, I don't know about you, but has anyone ever laid in bed trying to answer emails with like their neck all curled up and in a weird position and then they wonder the next day why their neck is hurting or their low back is hurting? Maybe it's just me. <laughs> but it really, if you're sitting in one position for a long period of time, it's not that it's a bad position, but our body is just not meant to sit in one position for five to eight hours at a time. So really having an ideal setup so that you can feel comfortable while you're working will go a long way. So here is the ideal work from home setup. That is me um, working at my boyfriend's computer. So a couple of things to notice here. My computer screen is directly in front of me. I'm not turning to the left to look at the computer screen. I'm not turning to the right. I'm looking straight at the computer screen. And even in this picture, I could probably elevate that computer screen a couple of inches to make it even more favorable position for my neck. My el elbows are at about 90 degrees so that I'm not reaching up and I'm not reaching too far down. So really where your arms can comfortably rest and you can still type and use your computer. You may notice this is a little hard because of the color of my pants, but my knees are at 90 degrees and fairly even with my hips. So you can see in this chair that I have a pillow under my hips. This is actually a lower chair. Um, it was for our old desk and when we got our new desk, the desk was a little bit higher. So, so we didn't have to go out and buy a chair right away. I just popped a pillow onto the chair and it was actually a little bit more comfortable on my bum as well. Similar to the computer screen directly in front of you, my neck is in neutral. I am not looking up, down, or side to side. I'm looking straight on at my computer. My feet are on the floor so that I have a firm, stable base to support myself. And if you need, your low back can be supported. So for you, that might mean slightly leaning against a chair. That might mean some lumbar support. That might even just mean a pillow behind your mid to low back. So this is kind of the ideal way to set up your computer. How do you do that though? If you don't have um, a desk that goes from standing to seated, um, you can use things such as books. So I like to stack textbooks to elevate a laptop or monitor. Um, you can even use Amazon boxes or any other cardboard boxes to create a stand-up desk or even create a footrest. Um, and to that point, a lot of people ask me, should I use a stand-up desk or should I sit down? My biggest piece of advice is both. If you get a stand-up desk, desk, you wanna make sure it's something that you can move from standing to seated. You don't need to stand all day, but you also need to sit all day. Back to the very beginning of this presentation, movement is key here. The more often you can change positions, the better. So that's why it's almost kind of nice to like use boxes because you can stack up the boxes and make a standing desk. You can take the boxes away and sit down. If you're a little bit shorter and when you sit in a chair, your feet kind of hang off from the chair and they're not touching the ground, it can be nice to create a footrest and put a box underneath your feet. Then some things for the upper and mid back, like I showed you in the previous slide, putting pillows under your butt or low back can really support you. You can also put a rolled up blanket behind your upper and mid back or even under your bum as well. So these are all household items you can use to make it a little bit more of a comfortable seated position for your day-to-day -day life. And then here are some of my general work from home tips that go hand in hand with decreasing discomfort in the back. So taking breaks at the top of the hour, there's actually um, a researcher article that shows that we are more efficient and effective at our whatever we're working on if we do things in 50, five, zero minute blocks and then take a five to 10 minute rest. If we try to work through for three hours, we end up getting less done in a longer amount of time than if we take 50 minutes with a five minute rest and do that for three hours in a row. 
So that doesn't have to be anything crazy. And once again, I understand this isn't always possible, but if it is possible for you, taking a break after you've done an hour of work can go really far. So that might mean if you have um, a slightly larger home and you have a second bathroom that you can walk to, go get a glass of water. If it's safe and you have space to go outside, even just getting up and washing your hands is gonna change your position. Stretching often, even just doing the seated stretches throughout the day, like I said, is gonna go a long way here. Hydrating, staying hydrated is just a really great work from home tip. It also just keeps you moving. If you need to fill up your water, you need to go to the bathroom, things like that. This other tip isn't really related to necessary low back or upper back pain, but I wanted to add it in here um, because it can play a huge role in posture. If you're on the phone a lot for work, using speakerphone if that's available, if that's okay in your home, or buying a headset. A lot of times when we're on the phone a lot, we can change our position and it can cause changes in the position of our neck, which then causes us to move differently in our spine and our low back and kind of just take it a little bit wonky up and down the chain. And last but not least, as I've said multiple times here today, changing positions often. Working from seated, maybe working from standing, even working from the floor, whether that's sometimes, you know, sitting on the floor with your couch behind you and your laptop on a coffee table in front of you. Just constantly changing your position so that your body is constantly adapting to new and different kind of positions throughout the day. So, before we dive into questions, I'm going to pop it onto the screen again, and I'm going to take you through um, just a brief breath work and stretch for cat cows, um, which we talked about in our earlier slide. So if you could hold questions for just one moment, and then we'll dive into any questions you have. Beautiful. Welcome, everyone. So I'm going to just have you all, if you are in a comfortable spot, if you can get into a comfortable location to sit with your feet flat on the floor and your knees bent, you're going to take your hands to your knees. Sitting up nice and tall, you're gonna inhale, lift your chest through your arms, maybe even turn your eyes a little bit to the sky, arch the low back, and on your exhale, you're gonna round the low back, tuck the chin, round the shoulders, almost like you're making a ski curve with your body. Inhale, pull your chest through your arms, lift your heart and eyes. Exhale to round. I want you to take a couple more breaths here at your own pace. Inhaling to lift and arch. Exhaling to round. Inhaling to lift and arch. Exhaling to round. Beautiful. That's another really fun seated one. So in the slide, I showed it as on your hands and knees, um, but you can also do it in seated really easily. Alrighty, wonderful guys. Let's open up the floor for any questions you may have. Feel free to pop them in the chat box. Um, I am here to answer any questions or review anything um, that we went over. And don't be shy, there are no silly questions. I'd, I'm happy to clarify also anything that we went over that was a little confusing by any chance. In the photo that you showed, um, you didn't have any, you, there's space between your upper back and the lower and, and the chair. Do you, you need that support as well? Or is it just lower back that's concerned? Yeah, I, I will say, I think that's a little bit personal, person to person. Um, <clears throat> I don't feel like I need that support. I feel like for most people supporting, even putting the pillow underneath the bum is more supportive because it gets you a little bit longer through your spine than leaning against something. And part of that is I'll show you is when people are leaning against something, they naturally start to do this rounded position in the shoulders. Yeah. So by being a little bit farther forward, I find that people are naturally actually a little bit more relaxed down their back because they kind of have to be to stay upright, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Um, beautiful. So do you have any stretches you could uh, for the neck? Yeah, so for the neck, I actually find that long hold for stretches aren't as comfortable as gentle movement. So similar to kind of, I, I know I sound like a broken record and I apologize, um, but it really applies to the whole body. So 
a lot of people will like this stretch and it is a great stretch, but I find it can get a little stiff. So doing things even like looking over one shoulder and then the other, looking up and down really slowly and gently can be really helpful for the neck. Another great one is just taking your head to one side and not even putting the pressure of your hand, but just thinking about dropping this opposite shoulder, almost reaching this hand down and breathing into this space can be really helpful. Another great one is um, the eagle arms will actually get into some muscles of your upper back and neck, as well as I didn't have it in here, um, but another great one is if you've seen thread the needle in a yoga class, um, or if you just Google thread the needle, it'll be up there. I just uh, didn't have room on the slides for that one. That's another great one um, to add in as well. Beautiful. Um, beautiful, more neck. Yeah, moving the neck around from side to side. And then another thing I will say um, for neck related stuff is we hold a lot of tension in our upper traps. So I'm a really big fan of rolling out with like a soft ball some of these muscles. So taking a ball between you and the wall and rolling out, that's kind of a little side note. Um, but looking up something like a tune up fitness is a great pot, spot with a lot of videos. I have some on my YouTube channel, but tune up fitness has a lot where you can roll out some of the muscles in the upper back and neck. I find that a little bit more effective than just stretching the neck. Beautiful. So another question is about holding tension in the middle of the spine. Um, Sorry, my mouse is going a little bit quicker. Um, just below the space between the shoulder blades, any stretch ideas? The cat cows will probably be one of your fan favorites for that. Um, I pers it's really hard to, for the back to target a specific spot in the back. I will have a lot of people like, I need that one spot. So a couple things I will say there is starting a stretch like cat cow or even thread the needle and then just really gently, slowly while breathing, moving your body in and out of that stretch so you can start to get to know where, where you're at. Or even if you're doing that traditional cat-cow, kind of wiggling your hips side to side, stretching in one direction, and kind of adding some of those different movements will actually help target some of those areas that are um, uncomfortable. And thread the needle is also probably another great one if I'm uh, picturing the spot that is uncomfortable for you the best as well as um, eagle arms that I showed. Beautiful, so for planks, what is the position your lower back right above your tailbone should be in? Um, great question, between rounding or, or, or hyperextending. So there's, I will be completely honest, there's a lot of uh, mixed ideas on what is right and what is wrong. Um, what I'm a firm believer in is that everybody's is a little bit different. So what you wanna be doing um, is sustaining yourself in a position that's good for your body. So commonly, we'll see a lot of women have a little bit more of an arch than men. That's just a common evolutionary thing. So what tends to happen is some people will either sag their low back in a plank or really over round it like this. You want to maintain your natural curve, which can be really hard to find. So what I recommend people do often is when they get into a plank, I like when people, I like to have people to kind of find their midpoint between super rounded and super arched. So you come into your plank and you arch your back as much as you can. You feel what that feels like. And then you cut and then you relax. Then you come into your plank and you arch your back as much as you can. You see what that feels like. The third time you come into your plank, you find the middle between those two. And that's usually safe. With that said, everybody's a little bit different. So you want it to feel good. Once again, like I said earlier, you don't want to feel a plank in your low back. Taking some adjustments so you don't feel in your low back is okay, even if it looks slightly different than your husband, your friend, the yoga teacher online. Um, I will also say with that, a way to kind of find that middle is starting on your back, overarching and over tucking and kind of finding that middle. And then when you go to lift up, you can kind of press through your elbows and really engage the core by pulling the belly button in and up while breathing. Does that make sense? I hope so. If it doesn't make sense, please feel free to drop it in and I will address it again. Um, beautiful. So many great questions, guys. Thank you so much for participating. Um, is it okay to use a medicine ball as an office chair for an extended period of time? I'm going to reflect a question back on you. Does it feel good? If so, then yeah. I like sitting on medicine balls. Um, I 
think they can be really fun <laughs> to sit on. If it's feeling uncomfortable in your low back, you might have some imbalances. It might be too high or too low of all, then I would adjust it. But if it feels good um, and you feel comfortable sitting there for long periods of time and you're not super, super fatigued through your back at the end of your day, then I think it's a great option. I like medicine balls because it does require us um, to move a little bit. So you kind of shift naturally or, or move. I, I might bounce on them like a small child. Maybe that's just me. But it kind of requires you to naturally weight shift and move a little bit, which is really great for adding in little bits of movement throughout your day. And it actually does challenge your core a little bit. So it's good to be moving around. Of course. Okay, guys, I still got plenty of time. So feel free if there's any questions, feel free to pop them in. Um, if you do have to run to your next meeting, um, thank you so much for coming. But I'll be here for at least another 10 minutes or so answering questions. Great question. Is there anything we should keep in mind if we work standing up? I would say very similar to the sitting down work from home setup. So you want to make sure that your main thing is that your laptop is not too high up or too low down. So if you're going to be standing up, bring the laptop with you or bring the computer with you. A little bit harder with a monitor, but pretty easy with a laptop. Um, another huge thing that I would like to see people be aware of is where that laptop is, same thing as seated. Like I have, a, I'll tell a very brief funny story just because I think it's worth it. I had a client who was coming in for neck pain and we addressed everything, it was doing great, but that, and then they were feeling good. And then they went back to work after a vacation. And like my neck pain's back again. And I checked in with them and I finally was like, okay, what's your work set up like? And they had three computers, like three screens, but they only did all their work on this screen. So this side of their neck was always really tight and this side was like always really fatigued. And it was because they were working like this for eight hours a day. So just something to keep in mind when you start to elevate your desk. And then in terms of the lower body for that, um, I, if you're a person who tends to hyperextend or kind of lock out their joints, then I would make sure that your knees are slightly bent. And if you think about it, um, just like you would think anything else, your knees are kind of over your, your heels your hips are over your knees slightly and then your shoulders are stacked on top of that. So when our body is in what's called dynamic alignment with that kind of nice stacking of the joints, it's actually easier and more efficient to be standing versus if you're arching or rounding or kind of weight shifted off to one side, you actually have to work more and expend more energy. So just making sure you're kind of stacked and using an efficient way of standing so you don't get too tired is really a good thing to be aware of. Great question. Of course, thanks for coming. Of course, we've got plenty of time. Staying hydrated. <laughs> Beautiful. Anyone who needs to head out, thank you so much. I got time for like one or two more questions. Well, beautiful guys. Like I said, thank you so, so much for coming. You asked some really amazing questions. From, I love answering them. So thank you so much. I will be sticking around for another five minutes. Um, if anyone needs anything, feel free to message me um, privately if you need to answer any questions about this um, via the chats. Otherwise, have a wonderful, wonderful day. My name is Carrie if you need anything. Of course, thank you so much for coming.
Have a great day, everyone. All right, guys, any last minute questions? We got time for one more. <laughs>